Good morning, beautifuls. Great to see you. Look at me on my layers. It's quite ridiculous, but I'm comfortable. So what the hell? It's, it's a beautiful day outside, but I just... Uh, it's cold. <laughs> so I'm going to do rocks. And actually, I suspect this is not a rock. This is what's known as an Andara crystal. And there's great discussion and argument about them as to whether they're actually just pieces of slag glass. Morning, Linda! Or whether they really are crystals. And I truthfully don't know. But this is lovely. Vanessa, good morning, Barbara. Yay! <laughs> it's lovely to see you. So, I mean, it's a bit of a mystery to me because it has these vaguely fracture planes that look, you know, I don't know, did it break like that? Because you can look up Andara crystals and you see all these things that, you know, amazing. And they could just be bits of coloured glass. I really don't know. We found this one in my husband's mother's house um, after she died. So really, I don't know, but it's very pretty. And it, it sort of waved at me yesterday, but today I thought, you really do want to come on. Oh, yes, it's great. You would like this, Linda, because it's just fluffy wool. It's been knitted, right? It's exactly your sort of thing. It's texture, and it's big enough that it goes over everything. I've got so many layers on, it's crazy. This is carnelian, and it's just warm and cosy sort of thing. Um, what can I say? Tumbled carnelian. Beautiful, beautiful colour. I can see all your faces popping up. It's lovely to see you, beautiful beings. Janine, Amy, good morning. And um, we have somebody bigger with us today. <laughs> this is not a pocket rock, right? <laughs> this is a big old chunk of sm smoky quartz. Um, and I love it because it has all these little dents and dimples and things inside the, the stone and it sort of it looks a bit like ice quartz it's just I love this and it fits in my hand really well um so even though it's a good I don't know kilo and something um you know two or three pounds maybe four or five I don't know um pounds not kilos it's just really easy to hold and you turn it over and over and it's got all these gorgeous bits growing at the bottom of the stones here and yes it was cut off something um, and it's beautiful. I'm really fond of this. So, and it sparkles, and I love to, I love to share sparkly things. Who doesn't? Well, maybe there's somebody, but not me. It is very pale. You're right. It is smoky quartz, but it is quite pale. It's not like the really dark stuff. So, I just enjoy it. And today, for once, you know, I'm into it early. Um, today, you know, we've been talking a lot about going into our futures, creating a future selves, becoming worthy, um, you know, leaving one identity behind and, and, and shifting into another. Um, and I was actually talking with a dear friend, someone in the heart field with me yesterday, and saying, I'm scratching my head, what am I going to talk about on Friday? Um, and long story short, she said, basically, keeping it simple, something small that you can start with, right? That, that and, and, you know, I, I do talk about just unwrapping the little corner of the chocolate bar or grabbing one corner of the blanket and pulling it towards you. So something small and sustainable. But then I thought, yeah, that's great. But in what context? And what came to me is this idea, and this, this is a thing that I practiced. There is one of, and I think I might have mentioned it yesterday. I, I don't know. Yesterday blends into a blur. Um, Magda, good morning. There's a meditation that I do, one of Joe Dispenza's meditations. It's called Changing Boxes. And very short version, you know, you connect with the unified field. You become everything and everyone and everybody and every time and every place, which of course means you're connected to all of that. And by the time you've done that, you've actually left your old self behind. And then you literally make a heart connection with your future self. Morning, Laura. Good morning, Eric. Good day, good day. I oh, know you're both together. Um, and you draw, you 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 go and be your future self. And this is a poor description of what you actually end up doing and experiencing in this thing. Um, and so you really start to feel and embody this new person that you're becoming. And then it's like you look back through a doorway and you see your body. And you have this heart connection with your body, your old body and your old life, right? Hi, Christine. 
how exciting you close Linda that's amazing because you totally transformed yourself you are totally in a new life we all are by the way every day so sometimes it's more obvious than others you know, look, well for me it's my body my old life is always behind me but I'm aware that I have this heart connection with my body with my old self and so my new self and my old self are drawing each other together by feeling this connection in the heart. Um, and I literally draw my old self to my new self with my heart. You totally outgrew your box, Linda. Totally outgrew your box. And yes, breaking tasks down into steps is a very three-dimensional practical thing to do, but I totally, absolutely love doing that. It's so important, so useful, so necessary. Because 95% of the things that we think we can't accomplish... In terms of the 3D world, usually comes down to I haven't actually worked out how to do it, and and then there's the other you know the other five percent which is gee actually I'm not really lined up with it anyway and that's a whole other story. But to be able to jump in a in a teleporter if you like, which is the unified field because when you're in the unified field everything is really available to you because you, you become everything, right? You become everyone. You become every possibility. And therefore, because you are all of it, you can choose to be any of it. Tristan, good morning. Um, and the way to draw myself from my present into my future, or if you like, even the way to draw my future self to me, whichever way you want to think about it, as I do it with my heart, I feel it with my heart. I feel the feeling of who I am in that future. And because I'm in the unified field and I'm really, you know, I'm deep and my brain is, my analytical brain is not saying this is impossible and you can't do this. It becomes very real and, and I really feel it. Hi, Kaya. I'm really there. The more and more I imagine it, the more I'm there. And so then it's quite natural to say, hey, body, catch me up. I'm the mind. This is what I'm creating. This is who I'm choosing to be. This is how it feels to be this me. This is what's happened. This is what my world looks like. This is who is here. Come on, body, come and join me here. I love you. Come and join me in this place. But it starts with feeling a heart connection to who you are in your future. Because then you, you literally collapse time. You really do. You collapse space and time. Because, of course, when you're in the unified field, there is no space and there is no time. It's just all on the head of a pin. So, um, to bring it right back down to something that anybody can start playing with. Because not everybody wants to do that meditation. Not everybody is perhaps in the space to do that meditation because it's an advanced one. And there are some skills you need to practice and develop. Um, and you know some super highways in your head that you've got to build before you can actually do that. It's just a skill that you've got to cultivate. Um, what you can do, you know, with your eyes open sitting where you are now, and this is where the keeping it simple and keeping it small thing comes in, is to just dial in on something that you know you desire about who you're going to be. Not the whole thing. Hi, Jen. Thank you, Magda. You're so sweet. Thank you, honey. Um, to just dial in on something. Something that you think... I really do know in all of the unknowns and all of the, the myriad possibilities that I've got no idea what shape this is going to take, right? <laughs> Shazam! I love that word, Laura. Um, in all of the crazy, you know, because there's so many possibilities. It's like you walk into a restaurant and the table goes from here to like across a rugby football field. You know, it's enormous. There's this massive smorgasbord and you want to try everything. Because, you know, and, and, and it's like, oh shit, I don't know. But to start with and remember that, you know, it's not like the normal smorgasbord where if you don't eat it when you're at the restaurant, that's it, it's gone. This is a smorgasbord that's there always. So it's not like there's a lack and there's not like I can have this but I can't have that. We never have to choose between things. But when there's a lot of stuff and you think, oh, I don't know which dish I want. I don't know what order I want the courses in. But I do really know that I love cheesecake. 
really good quality cheesecake, not the stuff in a box, one that's made. Okay, the smoked salmon, you know, you know that you love smoked salmon. I know that I love cheesecake and I really eat it because I will not eat the stuff that's in a box. Michelle, good morning. It's got to be really, really good. Really good cheesecake, preferably made by somebody I love and know, you know. Um, so we all know that, you know, at least the one thing of how we want it to be, whether it's tomorrow or next year or even in the next decade, you know, and sometimes you just have to think, oh, God, it's so impossible, but I really know that I want to feel this way or be doing this thing or whatever. We all know that we like smoked salmon. That's so cool, Kaya. You know, really, it's just better than cheesecake even. Um, so that one thing, and you see, I know, you see, Kaya, I know that when you think of the smoked salmon, perhaps not even consciously, you're seeing what's around it on the plate and possibly you're even seeing what sort of table that plate is sitting on and where you are and maybe who you're with when you're eating that salmon. So although you think, oh, it's a smoked salmon, it's way more than the smoked salmon. It's the stuff that we wrap around it as well. So for me, you know, it's not just the cheesecake. It's the fact that it's been made by somebody and it's really good cheesecake. It's handmade, you know. Ha! Huh, New York, right, you see? So you know that you like cheesecake New York style. So we have these neural nets and we do things by association. So the thing is you only need to grab one small corner of the thing that you really like and immediately your brain supplies you with a whole lot more stuff that goes around it. If you just start to pay attention and think, oh, that means this and I like this and I like that. And there's a big gap over here that I don't know what fits in that, but I do know that I like cheesecake and I like it New York style and I probably want to wedge this size on a, on a plate like this and I like to eat it with a parfait spoon or something, you know? We just have all these details that we think, oh, I like cheesecake, but it means a whole lot of stuff. And when you start paying attention to it, you realize there's a whole lot more that you can unpack about how your future feels and who you are than you think you can. There's just a whole lot more there than you pay attention to normally. So you see, you know, food is easy, right? But food is much more than the bite. It's the context. So, you know, if you think I'm going to be in a different place and I'm going to be doing a different thing, okay. But there must be more than just I'm going to be doing this different thing. What's it like doing that different thing? And where are you? And who is there? And so, and, and some of those things you won't know. But some of them you probably have an idea. It's like when I say, you know, what's that thing that you want to be doing and where are you? You may not know the country. You may not be able to see what the place looks like. You may, you know, but you might have a sense that the place is warm. Um, you know, if it's cold and you don't like the cold, um, you might think, oh, I want to be somewhere that's warm. I want it to be comfortable. I, you know, and for me... Comfortable does not really mean a five-star hotel. I don't like that. I like beautiful and I like sustainable and I like comfortable. But, you know, the kind of place that I really feel comfortable is it's good and I, I, I like the whole ethos of how the building's been built and how it's powered and the, the way the people are treated that run it. There's a whole lot of stuff that goes on in my head about this is a place I like to be. So I think if you grab the corner of the blanket that you want to pull towards yourself with your heart, the blanket, the future, the past, you know, bring your body into future, however you want to do it, and you start to really unpack it and notice it. Oh, yeah, smoked salmon, cream cheese on everything. Yeah, yeah, totally, you know. Something to the inventor drawing out the idea. Yes, absolutely. And this, this is what we do. You, you, you start with a kernel of something and you plant it. And by paying it attention and investing your energy into it and spending time with it in a place inside yourself where your analytical mind that you know is only referring to things from your past because that's all it ever has to deal with you know it, it doesn't know it can't imagine your future because there's no hardware to, there's no memories to say well this is what it's like to be wealthy I haven't experienced that 
not in 3D. I have actually, I am beginning to experience it inside my mind. I'm beginning to have a sense of what it's like when I am really wealthy. And trust me, it's not about living in million dollar mansions. It really isn't. That actually actively turns me off. It's just about having enough to maintain everything that I enjoy and live at the standard that I enjoy and do a ton of good on the planet. That's what wealthy means to me. It means I can maintain my body in comfort. It means I can buy sustainable clothes. See, you know, sustainability and the whole environment thing is quite big for me. But, you know, I refuse to be a foam at the mouth um, environmentalist because that's not my job. My job is to do what I'm doing now and more, much more. Um... So this little corner that I keep going back to and, you know, you can get really in love with a piece of cheesecake, with the joy of if I have, if I'm sitting somewhere, be it in a house or in a cafe or whatever, and I'm eating this piece of cheesecake and I'm savoring it and I've just had salmon and cream cheese, you know. And I'm in my garden, and a nice, and, and I'm close to a nice library, or there's you know there's a library in my house, and there's someone to hug. And th- you see, it starts to put itself together. And the important thing about that is not that you know you want a garden and a nice library and someone to hug. The important thing is then that you start to feel how that feels, because and and I relate to this, Kaya, um, and I'm sure that you, you've been both sides of this fence. For so long, I would think of the things that I desired, and all I would feel was lack. Because it's just, well, that's not happening, it's impossible, and I don't have it, and I haven't had it for so long, and it's just, you know, it's normal. Everything my brain was telling me, given the resources it had, was, this hasn't happened for so long, and I can't see a way to make it happen, therefore, you know, and so I'd be feeling the lack of it, right? Sanchia, good morning! So the, the, the thing to do is to make, to take from all of the things that you desire, to pick something that you can embrace, like the piece of cheesecake, to you, you know, this is my favorite, right? <laughs> yeah, on the damn fence, oh, totally. But you know, it's actually better to be on that damn fence than it is to be absolutely settled on the side of it where it's just, well, I can't have that. So I'm so proud of you being on that damn fence. So, you know, if it's too much to think about having it all, to think about a slice of cheesecake and to savour that feeling, and then to allow your awareness to gradually expand into, well, here I am, just feeling good about enjoying this particular spoonful of this amazing cheesecake. It's glorious. I feel so good. I'm just enjoying myself. I'm feeling grateful for this moment. And can I just observe from this space of savoring and loving, see, loving it, loving that moment. Can I just, from that space of loving that moment, of imagining this cheesecake, because most of us have had cheesecake or, you know, sat in the sun or had the salmon with cream cheese or, you know, had a hug from somebody or been to a good library or whatever it is. Most of us have a memory that is accessible enough that we can choose the part of it that we can actually believe, right? This is the key thing, is cut it down to something that you can actually embrace with relative emotional ease. So that you can say, okay, la, 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 it's too much to think about having the house and, and the loved one and the everything, but I can imagine this cheesecake and I can practice imagining that I'm sitting in a room somewhere, I'm not even going to say where, And there is a wonderful selection of books next to me. And, you know, you might just be in a cafe, because I've been to cafes that are library cafes. Morning, Sing Marie. Morning, Elaine. But to put it into a context that's just a little bit larger, but where you can still hold the feeling of loving it and having it, that's how you start to draw your future to you. You bring it to you by loving on it and making it real in the present moment. And so this is the fence, right? If you try to bite off too much, if you try to hold too much, your brain can jump in on the act and say that's impossible and you end up in lack. So you're on this side of the fence. 
You're in your past self. That's just normal. That's what you know. If you can think, okay, I can celebrate eating a piece of cheesecake because I really like that. Or I can celebrate reading a fantastic book. Or, you know, or I can celebrate having somebody love on me for a little bit. Hi, Rehema. Great to see you. Um, whatever it is, pick something that you can actually emotionally embrace. Now, why is that so important? Because if you can have the thought of it and you can feel the feeling of it, you've got mind and body in agreement. Really important. If your mind is thinking one thing and your body's saying, you yeah, forget it, nothing's going to happen. To make a change in your life, you've got to get mind and body working together. So whatever it is, you need to practice, you need to be able to consistently persist at practicing to bring up this awareness that I have this, that I feel it, I'm in love with this moment. And if you can do that with just the idea, because I'm seeing this little round table sitting there with a piece of cheesecake and, you know, most people would have a coffee. I don't drink coffee, so, you know, a glass of water. Um, and I'm savoring it and it's wonderful. And if that's all that I can hold as mine and I'm loving this, then that is what I will practice. That is what I will practice. And sooner or later, if I keep practicing that and getting really good at feeling that wonderfulness of sitting at that little table, my own little space with that cheesecake and enjoying it, um, then I'm going to be able to embrace something bigger. Honestly, Kaya, in one sentence, if they don't want to answer your texts, what are you doing, honey? You want to be with someone who wants to be with you. Maybe that's a conversation on Mondays, like, why do we keep hanging on to things that are hurting, you know, and that just don't work? And, and by the way, I've done that so much. So, you know, I, I could write some more, but really, someone who's not answering, I'd let it go. That's what I would do. That's just what I would do. Big love. That's a whole journey, being able to do that. But imagine... Just to flip it around, and we're out of time, and it's Friday. Um, imagine receiving a text from somebody who wants to communicate with you. You have to let go of the old stuff to be able to welcome something like that in. That, be, that might be too much and more than you can currently do. But if I had the choice, I would drop that kind of thing like a hot rock. Because it's just hurting. Dare to let go, plunge into the void of not having anyone to have that kind of connection with. And become in love with a future where you receive messages from somebody who wants to do that. Yeah. Great question. Definitely we'll be talking about this on Monday. So I got to go. Let go of that which does not serve you. Painful as it may be, it makes space for that which you desire. If it's not working, be willing to let it go to make space for something else. Big love, Victor. Victor, it's great to see you. I'm just signing off for the week. Enjoy the replay, beautiful man. Enjoy the resonant replays for Saturday and Sunday, all of you. And I will see you Monday and we will be talking about this great topic that you've just given me. So much love. Bye-bye.